Hey guys, we've got news for September 9th on Global. Um, last week I didn't do a news video because I was out of commission due to the hurricane. And also because of that, I didn't really have time to line up someone to discuss the news with me on this week. So this week you get just me by myself talking about the news. Maybe next week I'll find someone to come chat about next week's news with me. But anyway, one of the things we're getting this week is um, the second part of the Player's Voice campaign uh, that won the vote. It, it was two Neo Vision selection tickets. So the, we're going to be getting this um, as usual, typical global fashion. They decide to split everything up across a huge time frame. So on Thursday, we're going to get one of the Neo Vision select tickets. You can make a selection. Then, you know, over the course of a long time, we're going to be getting various other login rewards, free pulls, lapis, etc. And then on day 20, we're going to get another selection. So basically three weeks later, as well as a transcension pearl. So that's really nice. Um, you know, so one of these will be useful for the Clash of Wills this month. The other one, you know, will come later. Uh, they're also doing an adamantine chest that also gives more envy selection tickets i think these are the same tickets so if you want like a third copy you can uh, grab this bundle this is probably going to be a cash only bundle we don't actually know for certain i think it is though people say that you can tell if it's cash only or not by the graphic of the chest I never have like memorized what chest is what, but this is probably going to be a cash only bundle and we don't know the price yet if it is. But if you want a third Neo Vision Select, there you go. Now here is the list of units for the selection ticket you can make. Um, it Notice it's from Royal Puppeteer Afma and earlier. So if I remember correctly, the cutoff was Ling and Louise. So Ling and Louise are not included, neither are anyone that came after those two units, but everything beforehand is available. So, you know, most of these units are pretty outdated and not very useful these days, but there's actually still a, lo a lot of really, really good choices. Um, you know, the new Clash of Wills, uh, based on the news, sounds like you're gonna probably want a physical tank. So if you don't have a good one yet, you can grab um, like Afma, you can grab Behemi, you can grab um, Snow or Gabranth if you really want a physical tank. But you know, let, let's go ahead and see the Clash of Wills before you make that choice. Um, I might personally grab Noppy. Because uh, I, I think I think Noppy is really cool. It's you know I really like the fan design units. I currently have all of the fan design units except for Noppy. I gave Noppy a few of my tickets. Did not luck out on him. So um, I might grab myself a Noppy from this ticket. I don't know yet, but maybe uh, some other you know nice choices are like VV is great. Zidane is um, you know starting to slowly lose lose his place in the meta as you know more premium units come out and units with like. 300x SLBs, etc. But still, Zidane's STMR is still really good, so he's a great choice if you want to just grab him and STMR Moogle him. If you're like, you know, a DV try harder like I am. Uh, some other good options are, um, you know, it's they, they, you know, let's go through the list. There, there's a bunch of really good stuff in here. Uh, Cacteria is pretty convenient as well. She's relatively newish. Anyway, so there is your list. You're going to be getting two of these, and then if you buy the bundle, you can get a third uh, pick from this list. Uh, this is the exchange shop for the new banner. We're getting Kresnik and Bulwark. We're going to discuss them in a second. But if you pull on the step up, you're going to get exchange tickets. Uh, and this is the shop. And as usual, I, you know, I say this every single week. I'm going to keep saying it. Um, always, always, always choose the fragments before anything else. So if you go, um, I think 10 steps will give you enough to buy all the fragments for both units, probably. If you go beyond that and have more left over, then um, these are the two STMRs available, the Spring Basket and the Staff of Ripples. Uh, these are both you know, totally fine STMRs. The Staff of Ripples, I would say is probably slightly more useful than the shield, but then again, they're both about equal. There's there's, there's really no clear winner here. Um, Staff of Ripples is really high MP, you know, decent spirit, and then the, the Spring Basket is a good shield. Neither one of these are like you know mind blowing or anything, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you had to pick between these two, it's it's pretty equal. I would probably I would probably choose the Staff of Ripples, um, but Spring Basket is really good as well. So you know either one. Now, I will point out this, uh, and again, we're going to talk about this more in a moment, but the pity tickets for Kresnik and Bulwark 
are individual. So the summon tokens are shared. Um, we can see this right here. Uh, where, where is it? Uh, let's see. Here it is. So the summon coins, as you can see here, are shared. Uh, no matter which banner you pull on, you're going to get the same summon coins, which are used for this shop up here. But uh, the pity tickets are individual. So if you're pulling on the Kresnik banner, you are only getting pity tickets for Kresnik. So unlike Ling and Louise, where it was a shared banner, and for example, if you like pulled for pulled for Ling and Louise, along the way you got to the pity and you pulled like like I did one copy of Louise, then you can pity the one that you didn't get. This is not the case here. Um, these are individual banners. So if you pull for Kresnik and you get him on the very last pull towards the pity, and you know you have an extra pity that you don't quote unquote really need anymore, you cannot use that on Bulwark. You have to then go to Bulwark's banner and chase him as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, yeah. So the, the the pity tickets are individual between Bulwark and Kresnik. They are not shared. Uh, and here is the banner. We do not have any rainbow units in this banner and no New Visions Awakenings. Just two brand new global original fan units. Kresnik the healer and Bulwark the support unit. These are the final fan design units from the contest. We've you know been doing it for the past like four or five months. These are the last two. They're they're putting them together. So we have no real information about these units. You know, they're global originals. We don't have any JP foresight. So all we can really determine is from their previews. Let's go ahead and look at it. So real quick, here is the step up banners, just if you're doing these. Um, now, even though that they're not sharing a pity, a pity ticket, which is a little unfortunate, I'd actually rather them be on the same step up so you could share the pity, but that's not the case. But these are overall pretty nice step ups. Um, it costs 42,000 for the guaranteed pity. You would have to go through the entire step up twice to get 10 pity tickets and that would give you the guaranteed pity. So for each step, you get little perks. Um, you get the you get the after party tickets as well, which gives you know various stuff like red pearls or one tenth tickets and stuff. Um, you get a guaranteed rainbow each step, three guaranteed rainbows on step three, and it's rainbow or Neo Vision, but it's almost always going to be a rainbow. Um, step four, guaranteed rainbow. But step five, you get a guaranteed random Neo Vision. Not on banner, it's random. But some other nice perks they're adding is that on step three, you get a one-tenth ticket. This is the real nice one. On step four, you get 25 of the shards. So if you're going all the way to pity, which means you've done two laps, you're going to get 50 extra shards as well as um, 50 more shards from the exchange shop from the summon tokens. So if you go to pity, you're gonna have a hundred shards, um, you know, extra, as, as well as the 30 from the logins. You're gonna have 130 shards if you go all the way to pity, which is pretty nice. That's a real nice change what we've been having. And then on step five, you get 25 STMR tickets and a guaranteed Neo, you know, um, random is almost always gonna be off banner, but it could be on banner. And then Bulwark, the exact same thing. The only difference here is that the the pity tickets are individual per unit. Um, and there we go. So here is the previews. Uh, Kresnik is the healer. Um, base form, it's in the you know the, the, the classic plague plague doctor outfit. And then shift form, he takes off his, his mask. Uh, he is a trance version shift, which is a three turn duration and then a five turn cooldown. So he can't stay in the shifts permanently. Um, based on the preview, they're both healers and they're both buffers. So actually, neither one is a DPS. So it's probably kind of like Lotus Mage Fina, whereas for the most part, you're going to stay in the base form and then like you can turn into the shift form and get these like big cooldowns. Although his is three turn duration, whereas Fina's is only one turn duration. So you know we don't really have the data mine. I really look forward to seeing the kit. I've mentioned I mentioned it a few times. Um, this this is not the fault of the the unit designer. I think um, it's, it says who was designer. I forget his name. Uh, you know, forgive me for forgetting the name. Uh, I'm pretty sure it shows the name of the guy that won the contest. It doesn't show whatever it is. I'm just blind and not seeing it. But um, the person that designed this unit, it, it is not their fault that healers are just just not really relevant these days in Brave Expedition. It's just a fact of life. They're just not. 
the only way that you could probably make a healer relevant is, well, A, new content that requires a healer, which would be the best option, but also doing things like making the unit a really, really powerful support or DPS or buffer or something, and then tossing some heals on there just to quote unquote label it a healer. So I would assume Kresnik is probably going to have a really good support kit to where you can more accurately label Kresnik as support with some healing instead of a pure healer. But we don't know. That is total speculation. We're going to see on Thursday. Um, we'll go over the vision card in a moment. So the STMR is just a really nice spirit hat. Not really much to say about it. It's a very nice item, but it's not really anything unique. And then the chest piece is just a resistance chest piece, kind of like the, um, the rainbow robe with a little bit more MP and HP. And I forgot to uh, bring up the news for the upgraded. Um, like most fan design units, these TMRs have a upgrade. You can add a little bit of more stats. So I think the upgrade on the Plague Doctor's Garb gives it mana regen, I think, from memory. Anyway, um, here's some previews of the skills. I'm not really going to go over the skills too much because we don't really know the kit. Um, I'll probably talk more about Kresnik at some point next week when I either pull or don't pull on the unit. I will make that decision after seeing the kit. And then Bulwark is the other unit. This one is the support category. This one is the dedicated support. So base form is support plus debuffer and shift form. I believe this icon means uh, magical DPS. So, you know, we'll see how, how they do. Um, this one has a unlimited brave shift. You can swap between them freely. This is my personal favorite. It gives you total flexibility. Swap every turn as desired. So that's really, really good. Uh, and then the STMR is a, it looks like a one-handed harp that gives um, double hand spirit and some LB fill. And then the TMR is a materia with some stats on it. And that materia can also be upgraded by the special quest. And here's the previews. Uh, so obviously Bulwark will have wind support, probably because of the current clash, the coming upcoming Clash of Wills is weak to wind. So of course it's made for the Clash of Wills. And then this one is a little bit, little bit unusual. It, uh, it gives Demon Killer and consumes LB, but more importantly, it fills morale gauge based on how many active demons on the field. And it sounds like that's both players and enemies. And the upcoming Clash of Wills is a demon. It might have additional minions during the fight. So this is probably going to be really useful if you happen to pull for Bulwark, but we don't know until we see the kit. So I am really looking forward to the data mine on Thursday to see which of these units or what these units do and if they're worth pulling for or not. And if they are, I will try for them. If they're not, I will just hope for lucky off banners someday. We'll see that on Thursday. Here's the vision cards. Um, Kresnik's vision card is just double hand spirit with high spirit. So this is probably going to be the, well, this is the highest spirit vision card in the current game. So, you know, really good for magical tanks, really good for um, things like Aerith. Uh, if you're going for her holy build, this is probably going to be really good for her, etc. And then uh, Bulwarks. Bulwarks is a little bit less impressive because it requires an instrument, which is not super common. Most units don't use instruments, but those that do use them, this will probably be a nice bulky card. It gives defense and spirit and double hand spirit. So, pretty nice. And here is one of the new um, bundle cards. So I mentioned this on the uh, the Newsday podcast that I also sometimes um, go on and talk about the news. Uh, but we talked about it, and I mentioned that I thought this is the one that gets upgraded in JP to give um, automatic LB fill at the, start, at the start of the turn. That is not the case. I was mistaken. This is the one that gets um, for seven-star units only. If you've seen my previous videos from the JP server, you know that in the future you can add seven, you can add vision cards to seven-star units. This one, when equipped to a seven-star unit in the Japanese server, Global may or may not copy this feature, but if they do, when this card is equipped to a seven-star unit, it gives 500. In addition to all the stuff you already see, it also gives 500 flat attack and plus 50 times modifier to every single physical skill on the unit's toolkit. So that's what this one does. The one that gives um, LB fill at the start of the turn is this vision card. It's the riser card. So this is the one that 
Um, this is the vision card that only on seven star units will give you a full LB at the start of the turn. Um, you know, during the Newsday podcast, I, I, I mistakenly mixed up the vision cards. This, so this is the one you're looking at now that gives start of the turn full LB bar, kind of like, you know, the, um, like Saul and uh, Noctis and all that. But this one gives um, 50x modifier to all skills and 500 flat attack. So if you want to buy this from the bundle, you know, it, it might be worth it. It's only 1500 um, lapis to buy this guaranteed other than the other way is uh, to just randomly off banner it at some point while pulling Neovisions. So it's, it's, it's up to you if it's worth it or not and that'll be out on Thursday. So the last thing and the most important thing is Clash of Wills. This is going to be the final Clash of Wills for this season. Um, they mentioned that each Clash of Wills season is three, like three events long. This is the last one. I would assume that means it's probably going to be the hardest one, but that's just, you know, guessing. But it is going to be the last one. They're going to be using Kairos from the fan design units. So we've already fought this guy as a daily boss as well as a, um, like a Mog King farming boss. Now he's going to be a trial boss, or not, not trial, a Clash of Wills boss. Um, so from the preview they gave uh, a few weeks ago, we know that it's a human and a demon double element race. It's weak to wind, fire, and ice. And he does very high physical damage. And the news gave us a, gave us a hint that you're not going to be able to ignore the physical damage. Meaning he's probably going to have accuracy and ignore your evasion. So you probably need a good physical tank, a lot of defense on your party. That's the assumption. We don't really know until Thursday. And as usual, when it comes out on Thursday, I'll be doing the boss, figuring it out, posting videos. And we'll all figure out this boss together. But here is the, um, the quick summary uses lots of physical attacks. He absorbs wind when he's high health, and then he swaps to absorbing fire when he's low health. So we know wind, fire, and ice are the three weakness elements. So it sounds like ice is probably, you know, the go-to element because it always works, whereas fire or wind kind of doesn't work depending on the boss's current health. Although, um, if, if it's like the previous two Clash of Wills, you're gonna be OTKing him from around 100%. Which means fire should be fine, in theory. Uh, you know, we'll see. But um, wind will not work while the boss is healthy. So if you're going for a wind team, maybe you've got Sky, you, you want to go all in for wind damage, uh, you're going to have to work the boss lower in health to activate his uh, weakness to wind instead. Blind works on this boss, and they've said that blind will help you survive, so make sure you bring someone that can blind, which mean, means things like um, Summer Whip, or just a way to apply blind, either from the green magic, from an Esper, or from just skills that apply it, like Cacteria's uh, needle skills and stuff like that. And he uses Berserk. On your party, so it's saying on your party, it sounds like AoE Berserk, which is terrifying <laughs> if it berserks your entire party um, we don't know it, it could it could mean like you know just single target on your party we don't know but he only does it when his health is low so again it sounds like you really want to OTK him from high health but we will figure that out when it comes on Thursday uh, so the bonus the bonus morale for this one is is blinding the enemy. So if you remember the, the previous two Clash of Wills, the first one for Morgana, you got extra morale for buffing your elemental resistance in your party. And then last month for the um, the Asta Clash of Wills, you got bonus morale for buffing status immunity. This one you get bonus morale for buffing um, or blinding the enemy, which means you will not get bonus morale for buffing resist or status immunity. So, you know, last month Jade Moon Pendant was a big deal and everyone that didn't have Jade Moon Pendant was like raging about why they, why they didn't have it. Uh, it sounds like this month that will not be a problem, but we'll see soon. Um, last month, one of the special morale skills was to AoE cure a zombie. This time it's going to be to boost defense because again, this boss is a heavy hitting physical boss, so defense is good. I would assume this is like a really, really big defense buff, maybe even as high as like 500% or something. We don't know, I'm just guessing, but probably, we'll see, I suppose. And a new challenge option. So 
Uh, these are new options. We don't know if they're changing the existing ones to this one or if it's going to be completely new on top. Uh, you know, there's some speculation about is this going to influence the the max EX levels needed to perfect score last month. Well, the first month you needed EX 18 to get a perfect score. Last month they adjusted it in the player's favor, meaning you only needed EX 16 to get a perfect score. So they're changing it again. The news is a little bit unclear if you're going to still be able to perfect score with EX 16 or not. Um, I'm really hoping that EX16 is still the, the, the highest needed for perfect score, but we'll see that in more detail on Thursday. Uh, that's mostly it for the, the new stuff. This is all just old news, Clash of Wills. Um, so for those of you that have scored really highly in the past two Clash of Wills, we're now going to be able to buy the Magister's Esoterica crown which is going to be available on Thursday. And for those of you that scored really, really high, like, you know, rank 100 and above for both Clash of Wills, you can even go all the way to the Ruler's Crown for the really expensive one on Thursday. Um, I'm personally going for the Magisters, but for some units, they actually would prefer the Ruler's Crown. It just depends on the unit, but, you know, make your own decision. But I would definitely choose one of those two. Don't choose the, I mean you can if you want to, but I would recommend not choosing the other three because they're not nearly as good in my opinion. And then the um, the obnoxious drop. So again, don't forget, this obnoxious shop is only for season one of Clash of Wills. So once you get the remaining obnoxious drops from this Clash of Wills, they're not going to be any more of those. So go ahead and spend them. Um, you know, I would recommend you grab some Neovisions from the Obnoxious Drops, but after you go ahead and spend, I think you can get three picks with a little bit left over for some other stuff, but uh, make sure you do spend them before the Season 1 shop expires. And that's pretty much it. I'll be having, you know, a lot more to say about Clash of Wills on Thursday when we actually see it in action. Yeah, this is all just repeating news. Um, the score criteria is not changing, so they, they added um, the 10 turn, they, the change last month. That's going to carry over this month, so we have 10 turns to kill Kairos and the Clash of Wills. So the only other thing to mention is the lack of news. Uh, we are not getting the Shard Dungeon yet again this week. Um, that has been like a really hot topic of conversation on like Discord, Reddit, social media, etc. People are really frustrated that we are still not getting the Shard Dungeon after three months when, you know, Gumi said they're going to do it every two to three months. Uh, technically speaking, you know, lawyer speak, that the, the, we do have one more week to stay within that three month window. But, you know, it would have been so nice for Gumi to like do it more often, but I guess they are stretching that to the absolute limit of three months between Shard Dungeons. Assuming we get it next week, which is, not, which is not even confirmed. If we don't get it next week, then it's been beyond three months. But if we get it next week, Gumi just pushed the envelope to the absolute maximum and made us wait the entire full three months for a shard dungeon, which really sucks because, you know, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't want to get into the whole JP versus global comparison about shard availability, but, you know, it really sucks that global is making it so hard to get NeoVision shards. But anyway, yeah, no Shard Dungeon again this week. So, I will see you guys for more about this on Thursday, where I either pull for the new unit or don't. It depends on their kit, but especially Kairos. I am really looking forward to Clash of Wills. I love Clash of Wills. I love it, love it, love it. So, I I'm super hyped to fight this boss on Thursday. See you guys then.